Hey everyone, we're here today to look at an issue with a Roadshow Pinball where on the front of Ted, the bulldozer, the front that goes up and down, doesn't lift all the way. So we're, let's, let's take a look at it and see actually what it's doing. Like the ball doesn't, can't fit underneath the front. It doesn't lift up all the way, that plastic piece. So if we go to the test, to the dozer test here. We're just gonna test it and turn it on here. You see how it doesn't lift up all the way? It just kind of runs, but it just goes up like like shortly, like like not that high. So the ball doesn't even fit under that. So we're we're gonna look at a couple different methods of what could be causing that to happen on the game. So stay tuned, and we'll take a look. Move on, shall we? Hey everyone, we're here today to. Uh, Look at a roadshow Ted's tractor, the front end of Ted, the motor that operates the tractor, the front end that goes up and down, like during the multi ball and the um, the other things that raise that front end of Ted. And basically, this is the motor that controls it, um, and this is the gearing that's inside. I already took it apart. I'll show you how to reassemble it once we're done. But I just wanted to make a quick video here to show like, the interior uh, motor and the gears of that motor and basically how everything fits in once you take it apart. So I kind of cleaned everything already with uh, alcohol and a Q-tip and a paper towel so that there's a lot of gunk of grease in here, you know, that kind of holds the motor back to so the gears don't really uh, flow smoothly while the gear is in operation to lift that front end of Ted. So basically how you take this thing apart is that these gears just kind of come out and on this one there's like a spacer that's on the top of that side that's over here, the spacer I just took off. So basically the gears just kind of come off, you know, so. And again, I cleaned everything underneath in the gearing assembly and this one comes out too. So basically the order of gears of how they go back in, there's two spacers on this side, or one maybe, so there's two. So it goes on that, this shaft here, there's two shafts, and the one goes, has two spacers on that. So this gear, the smaller gear with the two gears kind of on it, the front end, the bottom kind of goes down that way, so it locks into, the, there's a gear already in the motor here, that, that comes off the motor. So there's a little gear already in that housing. So if you spin it, you could see kind of both gears spin at the same time. So then if you take the other gear, kind of put it on that shaft. Now that spins like that. And as I'm putting it together, I'm just showing you how everything kind of fits together. But as you're doing this, you might want to put some grease on each gear as you're putting these gears back on. So again, then this one fits on this shaft. So it kind of locks into this littler gear on the top of that gear. And then this final gear goes on the other side. So it locks into this smaller gear here. So if you spin this one gear, you can kind of see that everything spins at one time. And again, on this last one over here, where my finger is, this spacer has to go on the top of that. So now everything is kind of put back together like that. And then if you take the last gear, the end with like, there's like a metal, like little tab on it that goes into the actual housing. So now if you try to get your finger and trying to find like a space here, I could kind of get my finger into, but if you spin all these together, they should all spin at one time. Uh, it's kind of hard to get in here, but, but that's kind of how you do it. And then in the end, you take your housing, which kind of closes everything up. And this is where the gear shaft goes into the hole. So if you take that, put the gear shaft into that, kind of, you have to figure out how your holes line up to the other part of this. There's holes on this side as well. So if you take that and go, that kind of locks down. So now it locks in there and then there's three screws that screw this together and tighten everything up. So what you want to do on this is you want to um, take some grease 
which I use this super lube. Some people use it, some people don't. I like it, it's kind of a thin grease. It doesn't get hardened very quickly. It kind of lasts a long time. So if you want, again, if you take all this stuff back out, just kind of make, make some room over here. But you could also take, before we do grease this up again, I cleaned everything out. But if you take a Q-tip or with alcohol and kind of wipe everything down with a Q-tip, you know, put alcohol on your Q-tip and then go through the whole assembly and go through all your gears and wipe everything down. That's what you want to do first. So again, I'll put that in there. That's the first gear that goes in there. I'll have to squirt some grease and kind of get my finger in there and mash the grease around a little bit. Just might want to put some on the shaft too. I know my arm is probably in the way as I'm doing this, but so. So that's kind of the first gear that you got in there. And then you want to put your second gear in there. So you might want to put a little bit on the shaft and kind of slide, kind of maybe take some of that, kind of situate it around there, just get it in there. It's kind of, it gets a little messy, but you kind of have to do this to get everything to work, you know, so everything kind of moves and slides well and all that, you know, kind of soak it all into all the metal pieces and the gears again. So again, put a little more grease on here, put it on shaft, take your next gear, slide it on the shaft. Your next gear, put it on the shaft, take the next gear, slide it down, and then take your final uh, spacer here and just put it down on that. And then for this piece here, this housing, you might just want to squirt a little bit in that hole where the shaft goes into. Grease in there. And then take that. You just put a little bit on there. Just kind of rub it around a little bit. Maybe put a little bit there. Just try to get it under your finger and just kind of slather it around inside. Then take your final piece. Stick it in there. You might want to take, again, some more, just kind of put it in there. Take a Q-tip and just kind of work it in. You know, as you have all the gears in there, and just kind of put it in everywhere if you can. And as the machine starts to, you know, kind of work and all that, then this grease will kind of get into everything it needs to get into. It's a bit messy to do this, but you kind of have to do this with all your motors. I've done this on my Dirty Harry gun. I've done it on Monster Bash, the Drac motor. I've done it on uh, Adam's Family with Thing. So the grease after about 20 years or 25 years, it gets hardened after a while. So, and on this video, I just want to show you the placement of all the gears too, because, you know, I always look for references of how the gears are laid out. And this could be a good video for that. So... So that should be good. And then once you do that, put that on the side here. Let me just wipe my hands, my fingers down here to get the grease off of it. Then again, as we showed before, you take your other housing, kind of lay it out, like kind of go by the position of the holes there's three holes, so look at your housing, kind of line up the holes to the housing. Because uh, I think it only goes really one way. So that, and that's it. And it locks in like that, so now it's in. And then you have three long screws which are here. And then these three screws go back into the assembly 
and there's two other screws in this assembly that actually lock down into this housing and then you have the motherboard to control the board or control the um, there's two optos on here that go through and then um, you have the pulley which screws into that as well so let me just tighten this these screws in Because you got to take this whole thing apart to get the motor, the screws off the motor, to uh, to get into this motor. And the problem, the reason why I'm doing this is because it's the front of Ted that wasn't lifting up all the way. So I don't know if the gears are met, the teeth are meshed, like you know, meshed, and they're kind of like you know, broken down a bit, or what's really going on. So this is, I'm gonna try this first just to see, you know, if the, if this will work any better or not. So this kind of goes. Um, kind of, it's kind of hard to position the camera, but then you line up the two holes of the motor here and here into the bracket. So there's two screws that, that put this back together. So there's two bigger screws. So you kind of put those in the hole. I know my arm is in the way again. So we'll tighten this down. It's really, it's not that hard. The Dracula motor had a lot more gears and stuff I kind of remember in there uh, when I had to do that. And there, there were rivets that kind of held the motor together. So I had to drill out the rivets and then put my own screws in them to kind of get the motor back together again. So the motor wasn't that easy to take apart. Then this piece goes into because what happens is the board there's an end on this that goes through the actual um, the optos on that board that kind of make it to tell it like when to activate or not activate so I think there's really one way that it could go through so that's that and then there's another screw that holds that on to longer screw so then that screws into here to hold it down to the shaft of the motor and then you take your board and have the optos kind of face out so the motor could actually go through the optos as it goes up and down so and that goes like that and the two holes line up with the board like that so the two holes are down here the bottom of the of the bracket so, so that's kind of how you set it up so we'll try it put in the game and see if everything works okay Hurry! okay so I have the whole mechanism kind of put back together again but something to kind of indicate here when you're putting it back together I don't know if it matters or not but I screwed this screw in here you know to hold this mechanism onto the motor and what this does, this notch here passes through the optos. It gets to sense the different things as the game is playing. Now, if you take your board, which is here with the two optos on it, when you line it up, there's two holes on the bottom of this board here and here where the screw holes go and back into this bracket. But if you line it up like this, I'm just trying to line it up, this notch in here where my finger is, goes through the two optos so when I put it back together I made sure that that notch in the motor and this plastic here kind of lined up somewhat near these optos you know so because if you look at it that way that plastic piece needs to pass through this opto and that opto so if it's on the other side when you set it up I don't know if it's going to have enough room or like time or whatever to get around I don't know how this motor set up you know when when you put it back in your game so 
just the way I did it was when I set the motor back up, the gearing in it, I made sure that could, this can only go on one way. There's a flat end on that on that shaft that this fits onto. So if there's no other way you could put it on. You could only go on one way. So I made sure that the mo the gears were facing the shaft down through these octaves. So when I put it back together, at least it's somewhere near the proximity of where that little plastic piece needs to go through those. So if it's out here and it's nowhere near those, I don't know if the motor auto corrects and will know to go to those octaves. So it was just something I do so I don't have to rip this thing apart again once I get it back in the game. So it's something to look at. So um, let me finish putting it back together. All I have to do is put these two screws in the bottom of this board now to put that back onto the bracket and uh, we'll see if everything works back in the game. Okay, so now we're back under the play field again and I installed the motor back into the play field, under the play field. And there's a couple parts that I changed as well besides just uh, greasing up the motor gears and stuff like that. I changed the spring on here. I put a new one of those on because the spring was a bit old and I guess, you know, crusted up and all that. And this plastic piece here where the spring latches top to bottom on through the motor here, this piece here, my fingers, this raises uh, Ted's bulldozer in the front up and down. And I'm gonna show you a close up of the uh, piece of the bulldozer and also this piece and how it actually interlocks with one another. And this piece on my old one that I had was worn out. So that was part of the problem I think. I think it was slipping and not allowing the uh, bulldozer to go fully up and down. So uh, in the next part of the video we're going to take a look at that piece and show you how the piece actually works you know and interlocks with one another. And while we're under the play field let's take a quick look at uh, another uh, part of this play field and there's a board that's right here and this is an um, this is like a sensor board for I think that's for Ted red is on this side there's two boards there's one here and there's one here and they're the same board it's the same uh, board that does uh, the same it does the same thing for each uh, animated head and it actually so when you hit Ted in the face or in the bulldozer, this is where the ball runs over and actually senses the ball. There's no target on top of the play field. This is when the ball runs this over, the ball is sensor is sensed by this um, piece here, this board, and actually gives you the hits onto Ted. I believe it's the same at Funhouse as well. So let's zoom in on that just really quickly. And I'm gonna just show you something if you're having a problem with your board as well. There's a POTS adjuster right here where my finger is. And there's a little screw hole in there. And you could turn that left and right. And there's a little light here. So basically when the ball runs that over, that light lights up. You want to turn that POTS all the way to one side until that red light is on. Then start adjusting and turning as far, like as close as you can until that light goes off. So that adjusts these boards. And I'm going to show you in the next video as well, as I show you the other pieces. I bought replacement boards for this. I think Pinbits makes from one of those companies. Either um, Great Modular, I think it is, or um, Pinbits, one or the other. They make the board for that, and it's a replacement. It doesn't need to be adjusted. So that's a good replacement. But again, that little pots, little here, this little adjuster, you want to turn that left and right to adjust that board. And again, you want to turn it all the way to one way until that light comes on, and then start adjusting it until that light goes off because that'll be the best adjustment for that. And one other thing I want to show you while we uh, are kind of still under the play field here is we're, we're going to go back to this board again. I'm going to go up on this. And it's this board here. And this goes on the side of that motor. And this motor, in the first video I showed you where we did the gear greasing and all that, the actual spindle here kind of goes through the two, um, the two, uh, what do you call it? The sensors that are on the board. I can't remember the name. Um, 
it goes up and down through those. And this board is a replacement board for this as well. And that board, again, is either pin bits or a great modular. One of those. I'll, I'll show it to you in the next video. But there's a replacement for that board as well. So I bought a replacement for this just in case this board ever goes bad. Um, I have a replacement for that. So you never know with these games. When these boards go bad, if you're ever going to be able to get one again. So I like to get them to have spares just in case. And I, again, I have the spares of these two boards up here. These little sensor boards for uh, Red and Ted. So that's what I did on this spring plastic piece here and greased up the uh, gears inside that motor. So let's take a look at those pieces I was talking about and and I could tell you like where I bought them and if you need to buy them, you know the part number and stuff like that. Okay, so let's start with um, the front end of Ted. This is the bulldozer that goes up and down. And basically, um, I bought a spare of this just in case. You never know when you might need one. And I bought, again, we, I showed this in, this in the last video as well. But it's this piece. And this is the one that goes to the back of that motor. But as you can see, there's a piece. There's a, like a little tab on this side here that actually locks into this uh, piece that goes up and down, the, the bulldozer. And again, it's right here. There's a hole that locks in to this small piece here. And it kind of locks in, it goes in like that, and it kind of locks like that. So now it doesn't want to come out. You know, so it's locked in with that piece. So on mine, that was in the game, the piece was cracked off. So it wasn't there. So if this piece goes in there, it comes right out. So it never locks in. You know, if, however I put it, it never locks in. So I think what happened was when it was in there, it would slip out. And that's why it wouldn't fully go up and down. So I think that's, that was part of my problem with that. And as I said before, the different boards, well, let's, let's go back actually to that plastic piece. I got it from Marco uh, Specialties, and thank God for this, like, between them, Pinball Life, and a couple of the other pinball companies that sell these parts, like, they're, it's a godsend that they still make these parts. It's great to get that. And this is called the Roadshow Williams Blade Drive Arm. It's f one p b zero seven zero one double zero. So... That's the part right there if you need a replacement of one of those. I bought three of them. One to put on the game and two spares. You never know. Again, you never know when these are going to go bye-bye and you can't find them. So this board here, it's a, in a bubble wrap type of thing. But this board here is the um, opto board. For, that's what I meant the word before when I forgot optos this is what goes into the motor and that thing and that motor kind of goes through these two things when the uh, the bulldozer goes up and down so that's a replacement for that board as well and that's from uh, Great Lakes Modular and it's a RSBOB Roadshow Blade Interrupter Opto board if you need one of those and again it's Great Lakes Modular they're great, you know, good for them too that they still make these. They make parts, I think, for Twilight Zone and all that too. Uh, some opto boards. And here's the last one, the pin bits one. And uh, this is the two boards that is the one that's under red and the other that's under Ted. And those are the boards with the pots uh, adjuster on it. And let's just open up this bag. I never opened it yet. So I'm, I'm, I might change them out eventually if I need to, but again, I have spares, and that's what it looks like. So, and again, there's no pots to adjust because it's auto sensing supposedly. It's auto adjusts. So, and again, you can get this from Pin Bits. So good for them too to make some great parts as well. So um, let's go on top of the play field again since we kind of looked at everything here. And I've been redoing this, this road show. And once I'm done and with all the other little things I do to it, I'll probably make another video just to show uh, kind of what I've been working on with it. I cleaned it up. I bought it from a, a friend um, from Pinside. 
and it was a great it was in great shape when I bought it. It needed to be cleaned up a bit, but it was in great it's shape. I'm so happy that I got it. It, it plays in. great. So let's see if everything works with the motor. So what we're gonna do is go into test mode on the game. So we're gonna go into test. Test. Dozer test. Click on that. And you need to have um, the coin door shut or the, f the full power going to the game to make this happen. So I'm gonna hold the two buttons in on the coin door and push the button to see how it works out. And we can see that it's going up and down. So the gearing is fine the way that I did it. So that's it. So that's the way to test it to make sure that everything is functioning properly. So uh, let's get out of test mode. And that's really it. So let's shut the coin door. And by default, it drops down to the bottom of the play field. So that's how you fix the motor in that, um, that, that bulldozer of Ted. Basically, you could buy new gearing for that as well. There's plastic replacement parts for that gearing if your metal is messed up or something, the teeth are popping off or something like that. So give it a shot. It's pretty easy to clean out and fix. Um, like again, the, the, the parts I believe are interchangeable between Funhouse and Roadshow. So the gearing I think on both kind of kind of operate the same with all the gearing in the game. So you could check on the like Marco or something like that, but I believe that's the way it goes. So again, thanks for watching all my videos. This is a short one. Uh, I just kind of wanted to go through that because I had to take it apart and take a look at that gearing and try to clean it up. So again, thanks for watching my videos. Really appreciate it. You can see all my videos at pinballsupernova.com. And from that homepage, you could go to my Facebook page, my YouTube, my Instagram, and my uh, blog, stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Appreciate the subscribers. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.